Welcome back to Character Select. I am Tyler, and today with me again, the Mal, and we're playing sorcery again. We're gonna keep on walking on our way to Torapani. Uh, that's our final destination. But anyway, another hour passes as you finish the climb. With the sun starting to hang heavy in the sky, you reach the top and meet with the other end of the rope bridge. Look back at the bridge. It may look stable, but it is undoubtedly a death trap set to part travelers from their gold and from their lives. You continue on down the slope as evening draws in. So dodged another bullet there. <laughs> <clears throat> Some way down the hill, you stop for a rest and sit on a boulder to survey what lies ahead. The path leads downward and at its foot, cradled between three peaks, is a village. And quite a large one at that. Behind you, the sun is fate falling rapidly into the hills. It will be night soon. Do you approach the village or avoid it? This is Tristatanti. Uh, this is Biratanti. Uh, we are us... almost to Torapani. Yeah. Let us go ahead and approach the village. All right. The village looks like a good place to stop. You hop down from the boulder and make your way forward, when an overhanging branch touches your face and you hear a lively chirping. Freeze. Whoops. Uh, freeze. You freeze. Hovering by your shoulder is a small creature the size of a bird. It's childlike, but very thin, with green skin, and it flits around you on transparent wings. It seems friendly enough. It even lands on your shoulder, its tiny, clawed toes pinching slightly. Uh... Talk to it. There's your line. Oh, sorry. Greetings, little creature. And hello to you, the creature replies, chirping. My name is Jan. What are you? The creature does a backflip and gives a low bow. I'm a Minimite. Pleased to meet you. It reaches out a tiny hand and shakes your earlobe. What do you want with me? See that village? The creature replies. Last time I tried to go through, they told me I wasn't welcome, so I wouldn't mind some protection. The creature starts hopping up and down. Come on, it grumbles impatiently. Let's get going, can't we? Hold on a second, I'm trying to look up the... Uh, <laughs> the rhyme that the old man told us. Okay, here it is. See him though he sees you not, a stinging beast in a box not left. To guard a key it is his lot, to go a witch of luck bereft. I don't think this is him. <laughs> doesn't look like it, does it? No, not really. Okay, let us see here. What can you tell me about the village? There's can... Biratanti, and it's very safe. It's the largest village in the whole of the Shamutanti Hills. Every traveler who comes this way spends at least one night there, so it's a little bit expensive, especially for Minamites. Pleasant enough. Where I'm going is dangerous. You warn the creature. You might be killed traveling with me. The creature shrugs. I've got small wings. Can't get far on my own. The creature flits to your other shoulder once more. You're not in a hurry, are you? It observes. Do you want to sleep out in the rough? Ah. <sighs> well, let's get going, then. The creature shakes you by the ear in excitement, and you set off along the path once more. You descend into the bowl of the valley. The hills on either side are toweringly tall and throw the village into deep shadow. It would seem a very gloomy, threatening place, but from the streets come the distant sound of laughter and merriment. Do you sleep outside or enter the town? Uh, let us enter the town. <clears throat> you continue along the path. The sound of festivities grow louder. It's almost spooky here in the shade of the valley, and after so long on the dire road, the people in this village seem to be enjoying themselves. See? The Minamite on your shoulder remarks. I told you it was a happy place. Jan, what's going on? Are they bewitched? Jan shakes his head. No, if there were magic, believe me, I know. This is the festival of the young. What's that? Well, take a look. Jan waves a little hand around the village. The idea is that once a year, the children are allowed the freedom of the village. It is a time of great fun and lots of pranks. 
It becomes quickly obvious what he means. You pass the first few buildings where you find a number of children sitting in the street and drinking ale from deep mugs. Further on, a young boy is holding an old woman over his knee and is spanking her. On the other side of the street, a group of boys is fighting outside a hut with a sign that reads Glandrigor's Tavern. It is all complete mayhem. Do you rescue the old woman or leave her? This is crazy. Um... Gosh, I guess we'll uh, try to rescue the old woman. Or, well... It is a festival of some sort. I don't know. Uh, I mean, this might be their custom. Exactly, so I don't want to, like, be the... Party pooper? Part gaijin foreigner kicking in the door. Um, right. <laughs> so, or, so I guess we'll, we will leave her, since I don't All know right. uh, one way or the other. You consider helping the woman, but there is nothing you can do. It is their festival, after all. Do you enter the tavern, go further into town, or leave town? Uh, the tavern's not the same thing as an inn. No, tavern is like a bar. Okay. Might have rooms for you, I forget. Oh. Uh, but we do have seven gold <clears throat> to buy things, perhaps. Yeah, let us check in the tavern for now. Check in the tavern. Behind the bar is a thick-set man. A thick-set man is wiping down mugs with an old rag. Greeting, stranger, he calls. I'm Glandrigal. Can I be helping ye? Greetings. I've come a long way. Sure you have? Take a seat. You do, and Jan leaps up and onto the counter. Glandrigal seems amused rather than alarmed by the creature. How much is ale? You ask? Two gold pieces, and it's the finest in town. Well, that's the only ale in town. I'll make sure of that. <laughs> ah, so you're a capitalist. Um, <laughs> so we have seven legit gold pieces, right? Yes. All right. Then uh, go ahead and buy a mug. All right. You put two gold pieces down on the countertop, and Glandrigor pulls you a mug of beer. It's warm, frothy, and deeply refreshing. Glandrigor smiles. You look like you've been on the road a while. You have no idea. You reply. Glandrigor nods. Tell me about this village. Glandrigor shrugs. It ain't much to say. What you see is what you get. This place keeps going because it's on the only route between Kare and Katopani. If one of these mountain falls or the river freezes over, then this place will be a desert in two weeks. I'm headed for Kare myself. Of course you are, he grins. Didn't I just tell you that? <laughs> Cheeky. What can you tell me about it? Ah, Kare. I love the girl in Kare once. It's a town for love, you know. You have to live every day like it's your last in Kare, because the chances are high that it will be. There's a city of thieves if ever there was one. I'll survive. Good for you, he replies with a nod. I suppose the worst that happened to me there was a broken heart in the end. Glandrigor goes back to wiping down his bar, and a thought occurs to him. They'll be passing through Torapani, I suppose. The Sphinx in Torapani are normally a merry lot, but they're pretty depressed at the moment. There's a real gloom about the place. What's the matter with them? Oh, well, he thinks for a moment then waves away whatever was on the tip of his tongue. I'm sure it was nothing to concern you. From the counter, Jan issues a loud burp. He has been sipping ale from puddles on the bar top and is now quite drunk. Wake him. You poke the little creature who clambers boozily up your finger but then topples off and onto the floor. Leave him there if you like, Glandrigor says. I'll pick him up and put him in a mug. But you don't quite manage it. At the last moment, Jan rouses himself and flies wobblingly back onto your shoulder. I love you! <laughs> he whispers into your ear. <laughs> Do we Run. go further into town or leave? Run smooth the fairy from Shin Megami Tensei. <laughs> <laughs> Just like... <laughs> half useless, but also companionship. <laughs> mm. <laughs> uh, let's go further into town. Alright. See if I can't gather some more info or find an inn. 
Yep. You head out of the tavern and turn a corner to find a group of girls standing by a signpost pointing to the Crystal Waterfall. They are tripping up their elders as they pass and giggling. Ask them about the waterfall. You stop by the group and ask them about the waterfall, but they are too distracted by Jan, who they delight in poking, tickling, and generally cooing over. After a few minutes of asking them about the waterfall, you give up and walk away. One of the girls calls, Come back! Another shouts, The water is good for you! Yan sighs, already missing the attention, but comes back to the rest of your shoulder. But comes back to the rest of your shoulder. Cool. You leave the girls to their snickering. Do you find an inn or visit the waterfall? Hmm. Would have liked to have gotten information. Crystal Waterfall. Crystal Waterfall. Uh, I suppose we can visit it and then go to the inn, or... Yeah. You go back past the girls and head up a path that climbs their crack in the mountainside. Soon the air is filled by thundering. It's quite a climb, but eventually you turn a corner through a narrow cleft in the rock and you catch your first glimpse of the tall, natural waterfall proper noun waterfall, uh, plunging down from the cliffs overhead. Large crystal stalactites hang down either side of the water. There is only one path to reach it, winding up the rock face, and it passes by a small hut where a ruffian is collecting money. Uh, Ask Jan to scout ahead. You tap Jan on the shoulder. Your line. Uh, Why don't you scout ahead? Find out if this waterfall is worth the money. Jan nods vigorously. All right, but I'll be quick. Don't think you can get rid of me just like that. I can catch up. He flaps away up the path. Um. I wonder how much he's charging. Uh, greet the ruffian. You make your way over to the hut. Here, line. Uh, greetings. You, you begin. A, you collect a fee for the waters. I do. Sneezes the ruffian. These waters, uh, sorry. These waters cannot be so healing that he has not caught an awful flu from them. Free gold pieces. There is a buzzing at your shoulder as Yan returns and resettles himself. It doesn't look like much to me, he whispers. I think you'd be wasting your gold if you paid. Do you turn back and pay your haggle? Uh, let's haggle for a moment. Three gold, oh, sorry. That's your line. Three gold pieces for a bath. You shake your head. For a bath, that is too much. The waters are healing, the ruffian explains quickly. They'll do more than make you clean. Do you go, pay, or haggle? Mm, Try to haggle again. I'll give you two. The ruffian considers you for a moment, and he seems to be won over by your manner. All right, two gold pieces, but don't tell anyone I did it. Do you pay or say one? <laughs> uh, I was wishing I already talked was... him down one, so. Yeah. Okay, we'll go ahead and pay. Alright, two gold pieces. You hand over your coins, and the ruffian pockets them quickly, scanning the path either side to make sure he hasn't been seen. Go to the waterfall. You head up to the waterfall, which cascades forcefully into a deep pool. You strip off your clothes and dive into the pool, while Jan flitters through the froth. The cool water is fresh and invigorating, and you feel yourself getting rapidly better. You feel a huge swell of confidence. Coming here was the best decision you have made. This seems like it would be the cure for the plague. Um, wait, this water cures disease? But wait, this water cures disease... Something about that seems terribly important. Where does it come from? Where can it come from, this water? How is such a thing possible? Looking up the sheer cliff face, you can make out nothing beyond a slight shadow hovering at the very edge of the precipice, like a gigantic spider waiting to jump. Whatever it is, it must be a place of great power, a place to be sought out, or a place to be avoided, as one might avoid the plague. Now you can move on, refreshed and ready for the night. Do you sleep by the waterfall or find an inn? Um. Let us sleep by the waterfall. Is that it right there? Yeah. Yep. 
The idea of going back to, into the village now is unappealing. We're refreshed and calm, and the scenery here is beautiful and peaceful. Getting out of the pool, you dry off, collect your things, and head off into the trees to find a spot to rest. Between curling roots, you find a small place to settle down to rest. Jan perches a little way above on the knot and is quickly asleep. You are tired enough to follow suit, but you are hungry from not having eaten. Let us go ahead and eat something. You pull out some of your provisions and eat quickly. The night's darkness draws in around you, and in the distance you hear the screams and whoops from the village that only slowly fade. You feel lonely, distanced from such revelry. You rest your head on your backpack and close your eyes. Perhaps a few hours pass when you wake suddenly, aware of a shadow moving between the tree trunks. It turns as it sniffs the air. Wolfhound. Cast a spell. Do you have an idea of what you want to cast? Uh, if we can... Oh, we don't have any peas. <laughs> I was going to say we've got... trying to do pop? Yeah, we have plenty of pebbles, right. so... I was yeah, we got... We can do big, we can do jig, and we can do law. Let's do law. Because I think that's the, uh... Control non-intelligent creatures requires three stamina. Yeah, go ahead and give it a shot. Alright. You cast a spell, but strangely, nothing happens. The really? wolfhound wheels around. You must defend yourself against him. You draw your sword, the long metal flashing in the moonlight. The beast roars and howls. But it's unintelligent. That's mm. curious. Wolfhound creeps towards you, jaws dripping and fur shining wet. You arc your sword for its neck, and it bounds forward only to run itself onto your blade. It writhes and howls and lips back, bleeding heavily. You turn your blade about for a vicious blow. The wolfhound drops back. As the wolfhound grows weaker, its snarl gets madder. Whoops, it gets you there. Yep. Setting your stance, you make ready to stab and skewer the wolfhound in its gaping throat, but it is barreling toward and with all hell's fury at its back, and you are knocked flying. Blood streams from your arm and into the dirt. The wolfhound snaps its teeth. You react on instant instinct, dodging around a tree for cover. Ah, it doesn't attack when I want it to. Uh, the yeah, wolfhound is crawling now. It's fur thick with dried blood. And we got it now, but we're pretty injured. Oof. Put all your strength into a sweep of your blade, hoping to finish the creature in a stroke. The blade connects, and as the wolfhound weakly opens its jaws to bite, you plunge your blade between its teeth and all the way down to its heart. The wolfhound howls a gurgling, blood-soaked sound, and then it dies. Well, let's try that again. That was... You want to try again? Whoops. Oh, oh well. Uh, I, can, I can rewind that. I would say... Okay, so yeah, eat something, cast a spell, or let's maybe got, cast big. I'm, I'm gonna do it. I'm as only is. rewinding. I'm only rewinding the fight. Okay, so yeah, then law. Because you wanted to retry the fight. It's curious that nothing happened using a uh, magic move. And I think it was going to I think defend. It defends. Yeah. And then it attacks. Nope. Oh shit. Uh. Much better that time. Yep. One stamina lost. Decent dueling. The beast defeated, you pause to regain your breath and wipe your sword. Sleep. Then, once satisfied, you lay down again and try to sleep. Jan flutters down and resettles on your shoulder. Your dreams are filled with walking, with peaks and valleys and endless paths. A curious light plays across them, building walls to heights before ruining them as it moves away. The rest of the night passes silently. Yay. Um, so there was... Beyond no Biristanti. Yeah. Oh, I guess, yeah, we can't go to the Crystal Waterfall until we go up. Yeah. Well, we just came from the Crystal Waterfall. We're going to the source of the Crystal Waterfall if you go up. Yeah. You rise early from your spot beneath the tree, and as you gather your things, Jan leaps up onto your shoulder. Ready to go? He chirps. You pass through the village, which is now quiet as the grave, and rejoin the path on the far side of Biratanti. The sun 
sits on the horizon like a gleaming jewel. If all goes well, you will reach Torpani today, the last village in the Shamutanti Hills. After a short climb, the path breaks, leading uphill to the left and downhill to the right. So up leads into this black field, and south leads towards this hut and the crystal waterfall. Uh, ask Jan for his advice. Which way, Jan? To the right is a forest. To the left, the going is easier. The path heads through a field of black flowers to Torapani. What else do you know? You demand suspiciously. Nothing, protests the creature. And that's a fine way to talk to your guide. I'm not charging you for my advice, you know. You'll get no more from the creature. With Torapani so close, it hardly matters which way you go, surely. Uh, let's go to the right. Go to the right. You don't want to go through the field of flowers. We go right, you decide. And be on your guard, Jan warns you. You climb a rise, and the way is not too steep, and as noon approaches, you have crested the ridge and are descending it again. You are now at the highest point of the hills, where the trees are thin, the view west goes on forever, and sometimes you catch glimpses of Kare on the northern horizon. Do you stop and eat, or keep going? Mm. Trying to decide with the we'll keep going. You decide not to stop to eat, but push on. Jan is in a talkative mood, and over the worst of his headache from last night's drinking, and fills the air around with his chatter about what he can see, and how things smell, and what he plans to do once he makes his fortune kare. You pass from the open hillside into a patch of deep forest, Quite suddenly, Jan falls quiet and hisses in your ear, Stop! Stop now! Stop, but say nothing. You come to a dead stop. Jan is right. Something is moving through the trees behind you. A moment later, a point of steel has emerged from the darkness between two trees and touches your neck. You've seen me, whispers a voice. I know it. Uh, okay. Uh, I don't know if we should look into the darkness. Uh, answer? We're going to answer, and we're going to answer next time on Character Select. <laughs> Tease. So click that like button down below if you want to. Subscribe, ding that bell. Now, what do you think this is? I'm not sure, but the fact that it was uh, very quick to get upset about if we've seen it, I don't think we should look at it. <laughs> All right, but well, we'll see what it is next time.